So welcome to this video in which we'll talk about symmetries in quantum mechanics. We've already covered quite a bit about this in lectures in class, but um, or in, in problem sessions in class, but I do want to go into it um, in a little bit of detail in this video. So what's a symmetry? A symmetry is basically an invariance under a transformation. Um, since we're talking about quantum mechanical systems, the transformation will have to be unitary. Now, there's a couple of there's four different um, symmetries that we want our theory to satisfy um, and we'll start with translations in time um, so if we have a unitary transformation that describes um, this translation in time we want our system to be invariant under that so it doesn't matter where we pick or uh, or time zero um, point there's invariances under translations in space so if we have a translation over a vector a um, that should leave the system invariant. And again, um, there's a unitary operator that is associated with that. Now we have invariance of rotations in space. So if we rotate over an axis theta or over an angle theta around an axis n, that will leave our system invariant. And again, we have a unitary operator for that. And finally, we have Galilean transformations which transfer from one inertial reference frame to another under um, the assumption of Galilean relativity. Again, there's a unitary operator associated with that. Now, what I've done here is I've written these exponential terms, um, which I can do because of the Stone theorem. Um, the Stone theorem says that uh, unitary transformations um, can be written through um, Hermitian infinitesimal generators. It's a little bit uh, um, more precise than that, but basically, if I have a unitary transformation, as in these four cases above, I can write this as e to the minus i a times a Hermitian operator. So t um, is a Hermitian operator. And of course, in quantum mechanics, that Hermitian operator corresponds to a physical property, which we will be able to access um, in, in uh, an experiment, at least in principle. So if we look back at our, uh, our operators, um, and we look at uh, the um, specific Hermitian operators that we use in the exponent here to form our uh, unitary transformation, we'll see that for the time transformation we have the Hermitian, uh, we'll have the, the Hamiltonian operator. For the space translation we have the momentum operator. For the rotations in space we have the angular momentum operator. And for the Galilean transformations we have this operator G, um, which will turn out to be minus m times the uh, position vector. So these are the um, physical observables or the physical properties corresponding with the Hermitian operators that act as the infinitesimal generators for the unitary transformations under those four fundamental um, transformations or symmetry transformations that we, uh, that we identified that our system has to satisfy. Now let's look at uh, conservation laws related to these symmetries in a little bit more detail. So in the past videos, we've introduced Ehrenfest's theorem, which gives the total time derivative of an expectation value for a certain state phi. Um, and it gives that as i over h bar times the expectation value of the commutator of the Hamiltonian with that um, operator a. And then there's in the case of a, a t an explicitly time-dependent operator A, there's a, a partial derivative there of the operator to the time. Again, um, an expectation value is taken with uh, respect to the, the state phi. Now, if we focus on time-independent operators only, that last term will be irrelevant. And so we just have the total time derivative of the expectation value is related to the expectation value of the a commutator with the Hamiltonian. So if the commutator with the Hamiltonian, commutator of this operator A with the Hamiltonian is zero, then that means that that total time derivative will be zero. And so the expectation value of A for any field phi will be constant. So that means that if an operator commutes with the Hamiltonian, we can look at this operator or the expectation value of this operator as a constant, as a, a conserved quantity. So for example, if we transform our state phi under this unitary transformation that describes a translation in space over a vector a that happens with the generator p, 
then we expect that this um, that uh, the expectation value of the Hamiltonian um, will remain unchanged. If I if I move my entire system over a certain distance, I don't expect my energy to to be changed. So my expectation value of the Hamiltonian for a field phi must be equal to the expectation value of the Hamiltonian for a field phi that has been translated by A. And from that we can derive that the Hamiltonian and the momentum um, operator have to commute and that therefore the momentum, the expectation value of the momentum will be a constant or will be a, a conserved quantity. Um, and of course this um, is then a, a, an, an um, expression of the conservation of, uh, of linear momentum um, through or uh, operator uh, um, uh, operator formalism here. We can do the same thing for rotations. Um, we'll, we'll find that the Hamiltonian commutes with the angular momentum operator um, and that in that case the uh, expectation value of the angular momentum uh, for a field phi is constant and again there's conservation of angular momentum. Again something we expect. So let's look now at um, the effect of this unitary operator given um, by the translation or given um, by this exponential here so using the uh, infinitesimal generator that's the momentum operator um, and let's look at the effect of this operator on the position operator so the translation transformation in space um, on the operator x so if I look at the expectation value of this operator x um, for a field that has been shifted by this uh, by this distance a, and I'm working in one dimension here for simplicity, then I can write this uh, expectation value just using phi a x phi a. Um, my x operator, um, or my phi a's, will have the u, um, u dagger, and the u associated with them. And so if I um, think about this, uh, this expression in terms of phi, um, I'll have an expectation value of phi, um, or the expectation value of u dagger x u, with phi. That must be equal to the expectation value of x um, with phi a. Now the expectation value of x with phi a must be the expectation value of x with phi plus a distance a. I've only shifted the position. So that operator must have an expectation value that's different by just that difference, um, that distance a. Now all of this has to be satisfied for any field phi or for any state phi. So I will have a u dagger x u equals x plus an identity operator because this last um, equality here has to be um, an, uh, an operator identity. So um, I find that my u dagger x u is x plus um, a times the identity operator. If I now take the limit for a going to zero, I expand my unitary operators here um, as, as 1 minus, e, minus i a um, p over h bar, then I'll find the con canonical commutation relations that the uh, commutator of x and p is i h bar times the identity operator. Now let's look what we uh, can do on our uh, um, uh, square integrable functions in one dimension, where we can choose two particular implementations of this uh, uh, operator x and of p. We'll choose the operator x such that it just multiplies the function with x and we'll choose the operator p such that it um, multiplies it with minus i h bar and takes the derivative with x. Now we can uh, calculate <coughs> excuse me, we can calculate this commutator of x and p applied on phi and we'll find indeed that we get i h bar times uh, the function and so indeed that commutation, that canonical commutation relation is satisfied. Um, so this indicates that uh, this particular choice for those two operators x and p does satisfy the canonical commutation relation which is something that follows from the shape of our unitary translation operator um, and the uh, effect it has on the, the position. Okay. So we can do similar games with the Galilean transformations and we've done that in class to quite some, uh, some detail. Um, so now, instead of requiring that the position, the transformed position um, expectation value shifts by the position with the shift in the position, we now have that the um, velocity expectation value 
in this transform frame is related to the velocity expectation value in the original frame plus the velocity um, of our uh, transformation. So if we start from this expression, we'll find our expression for g in terms of the position operator, um, but we can also start from a different approach and look at x dot as something that we obtain from our, um, our um, time derivative uh, through our uh, um, commutator with, uh, of the Hamiltonian with the position um, operator. And if we now realize that x dot is also equal to the momentum divided by m, so velocity is momentum over the mass, um, and this is equal to the, um, the commutator of p squared over 2m with x, since if we have an expression like this, we'll end up with a derivative of, um, of the, the function that we have here, the function of p, which will be p over m, so if all this is equal, and we have in particular um, our Hamiltonian here, and uh, we have our p over 2m that depends on x, that difference will have to be independent of the momentum, or in other words, the Hamiltonian will have to be equal to uh, p squared over 2m plus a function that only depends on x. And so this is how we could use this particular symmetry, and we use this uh, to in, in, in more detail in class, to get to the point that our uh, Hamiltonian in one dimension has to be uh, momentum squared over 2m plus a potential energy depend that depends only on x. So in this fairly short lecture, um, I, or in this very, fairly short video, I just want to summarize things that we discussed in class and that we went through in terms of calculations um, to kind of put it all together to indicate uh, the importance of, of these symmetries. The main thing, however, that I think um, you should remember is uh, is right here is how we get from our um, position and our, our momentum and our position operators to our canonical commutation relations and then how a particular implementation of this indeed satisfies um, this commutation relation um, on the square integrable functions in one dimension. Okay, that's it for this video.